It took two years, 448 pages, and then just a nine-minute speech. But tomorrow, former special counsel Robert Mueller will face questions from lawmakers. Members of Congress aren't the only ones with questions, though. Lisa Desjardins is back now to run through what viewers like you have been asking. This room is empty today, but tomorrow it will be full of people and of questions for Robert Mueller. There are many, of course. Our viewers alone sent us nearly 2,000 examples of what they would ask. Those questions came from every corner of the country. Our viewers wrote in from nearly every state, places large and small. A few of them came from other countries, too. Canada, the UK, Taiwan. So what are the key issues for Mr. Mueller? What matters most? Let's start with one of the biggest issues over tomorrow's hearing, a question we heard again and again. If Mr. Mueller was not bound by the OLC guidelines... That a sitting president could not be indicted. Would you have recommended the indictment? OLC is an abbreviation that may come up a lot. It's the Office of Legal Counsel in the Justice Department, and it sets many of the ground rules for the agency. This key question surrounds what may be the most quoted line from the report. While this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. If we had had confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. Why no conclusion? Mueller did not say directly, but pointed out an opinion from the OLC concludes that a sitting president may not be prosecuted. This has been an overriding question for Democrats since the day the report came out, when the House Democratic Caucus leader joined our Judy Woodruff. You don't accept what he said, that he couldn't reach a conclusion about whether or not there was obstruction of justice committed. To me, that's not the end, that's just the beginning of what needs to come next. Another overarching issue. Here's Leslie Smith of Oakland, California. Were you at any time impeded in your investigation? This is fascinating because the most damning parts of Mueller's report lay out evidence that the president tried to end or impede Mueller's investigation itself. Democrats, led by New York's Jerry Nadler, who runs the Judiciary Committee, have told us questions about the president impeding Mueller will be a major focus, including testimony from former White House counsel Don McGahn and former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski, who told Mueller that the president tried to fire or limit the special counsel. Be ready to hear about two other people in the Trump universe as well. Paul Manafort, who was Trump's campaign chairman, and Michael Cohen, who was his longtime lawyer and fixer. Both were part of Mr. Mueller's investigation. Both are now in prison. And in his report, Mueller laid out evidence that the president tried to tamper with their testimony as witnesses by offering potential pardons. The time with Mueller will be evenly split between Democrats and Republicans. And there we may see more questions about Mueller himself. We go to Hawaii and Kevin Doyle. After Comey was fired, did you ever inquire about or seek to be appointed the FBI director? The president and Republicans have long said Mueller and his team were biased, including this assertion. He wanted to be the FBI director, and I said no. The Mueller report disputes this charge, citing former White House advisor Steve Bannon as saying that Mueller did not come in looking for the job at the FBI. The corrupt cabal, what we see of Shrug, Page, McCabe, Comey, and others. How Republicans, led by Georgia's Doug Collins on the Judiciary Committee, may ask about other charges of bias as well and point to something other than a he also made it very clear there was no collusion. Mueller concluded there was no evidence of conspiracy by the Trump campaign, but there will be a number of questions about the specifics, the contacts between the Trump campaign and Russians, including Russian operatives. That raises another set of questions about what Russia did. Joan Murdoch of Pennsylvania put it well. Do you think that the public debate over Section 2, the obstruction section, has overshadowed the detail and the importance of Section 1, which is all about how the Russians interfered in our election. Part 1 of the report about the Russian interference will likely come up most in Part 2 of the hearing, when the House Intelligence Committee takes over. Thank you. We'll come to order. Expect many questions about what Mueller learned about Russian activities in general, but also expect that he may not be able to answer some questions publicly. This section of the report is the most highly redacted because of investigations still underway. Lawmakers each will have five minutes at the most to question Mueller. 
That's about as long as his story. So they will each have to choose a focus. Some would ask about the president. I'd like to ask Mr. Miller why he didn't subpoena the president. Or the attorney general. Mr. Barr said that you and he had a disagreement regarding the law underlying the production of your report. What was the nature of that disagreement? And some about how Mueller himself is doing. Has the spotlight on you caused you any stress or health issues? Still others asked about the point of this report. After the findings, do you feel this report deserves all the time and effort that's been spent by our politicians? Scores of questions for one man who will be back in a very hot spotlight tomorrow. I'm Lisa Desjardins for the PBS NewsHour. Let's examine now how the White House is getting ready for Mueller's testimony tomorrow with Yamish Alcindor. Yamish, let's jump right in. There's been a lot of talk about the potential impact of that Mueller testimony. What do we expect him to say? In this testimony before the House, Robert Mueller wants to stick to the confines of the 448-page report that he and his team compiled. A spokesperson for Robert Mueller told me he wants to stay within, quote, the four walls of the report. He's also, Robert Mueller's also going to be wanting to enter into the congressional record, the actual report, to really underline and double down on that point. That said, I'm told he's going to have a short opening statement. He's been preparing with people that worked for him at the special counsel's office to really figure out and hone in on what he can and can't talk about in his own settings. He also wants to really be thinking about how to not go beyond the report. Um, and as a result, what's going to be interesting is after that short opening statement, Democrats and Republicans are going to be posing questions. Democrats are going to be trying to push him a little bit past the report. They're going to be trying to figure out why he didn't subpoena the president, also why he didn't make a decision on obstruction of justice. Republicans are going to be having their own points, and I'm told that Republicans are likely going to be honing in on his hiring process and why he may have hired people that didn't like the president or that donated to Hillary Clinton. Um, Democrats tell me there's not going to be any surprises that they expect, but that said, we got a really big surprise today, of course, the day before Robert Mueller's supposed to testify. And that surprise was that Robert Mueller wanted to enter as a witness and have a sworn witness next to him as Aaron Zebley. He is a longtime aide to Robert Mueller and is described as a deputy special counsel. Robert Mueller wanted Aaron to speak next to him because I'm told he wanted Zebley to talk about personnel issues, to talk about the hiring process, and to essentially take some pressure off of Robert Mueller. The committee, of course, said, no, you cannot do that. As a result, Aaron Zebley is going to be actually sitting alongside Robert Mueller as his counsel. So he's still going to be able to talk to Aaron Zebley and ask him questions and possibly confer if there's some things that he wants to talk about that may be just a little bit outside the purview of the report. But the fact that we got this really big surprise the day before the testimony says that there could be fireworks that we don't see coming. Some last minute developments behind the scene there. There's also the issue of this letter, Yamish, that the Justice Department sent to Mueller offering him some guidance on the testimony. How could what they laid out affect what he does or doesn't say? The Department of Justice is really leaning in on Robert Mueller to stick to what's in the report. And Robert Mueller agrees he wants to stick to what's in the report, but the Department of Justice sent a letter just to make that crystal clear to Robert Mueller. And here's some things that they told him. Um, they told Robert Mueller that, quote, any testimony must remain within the boundaries of your public report because matters, matters within the scope of your investigation were covered by executive privilege. The letter also cautioned against discussing, quote, redacted portions and testifying about, quote, information protected by law enforcement, deliberative process, attorney work product, and presidential communications privileges. And last, which is a key part for the president, Democrats say, Robert Mueller, they said, should not talk about, quote, uncharged individuals. Now, Democrats will say the president is an uncharged individual. And even though Robert Mueller and the Department of Justice are on the same page, the DOJ sending this letter shows that they're concerned. So finally, Yamish, what about the White House? The president has said he might watch some part of the hearing. What is at stake for President Trump tomorrow? This is going to be a big televised event largely focused on whether or not President Trump directed people to lie and whether or not he was trying to turn down and close down the investigation as Robert Mueller was, was really carrying out his duties. Um, so Democrats have been telling me over and over again, a lot of people don't read the book, but they watch the movie. So Democrats say even if Robert Mueller says nothing new, they're hoping that millions of new people, millions of new voters rather, that they will hear Robert Mueller talking about the president, what Democrats say is bad behavior coming out of the White House. That said, I recently talked to the president and put the question to him. I said, Mr. President, are you concerned about Robert Mueller testifying? Are you going to watch it? President Trump says he's not 
planning to watch the entire Robert Mueller testimony, but he will watch a little bit of it. He said that he's not concerned and he thinks that Democrats are really wasting their time here um, and that it's really going to come down to him looking like a president that's being harassed by Democrats or going too far. That said, the White House is still concerned. They're going to be really focused in on this tomorrow, as is, of course, all of Washington. Our own Yamish Alcindor is going to be covering that hearing tomorrow. Thank you, Yamish. And join us tomorrow morning. Our live coverage of the Mueller hearing starts at 7.40 a.m. Eastern online on our website at pbs.org slash newshour and on our social media channels like YouTube. Then tune in right here at 8.30 a.m. on your local PBS station when Judy Woodruff leads our live coverage of the former special counsel testifying before two House committees. Check your local listings.